gonna start busting it wide open. Okay. So I have exhausted all my options. I'm not gonna say I'm nervous, but I'm not not nervous. I'm Kristen, and this is Matt. We've spent the last four years sailing our $5,000 Craigslist boat to some of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean. From spearfishing in South Andros, Bahamas, staying in a treehouse and riding horses through the rainforest of the Dominican Republic, to even dodging hurricanes in Puerto Rico. We could have never imagined what this adventure would become. After gaining more sailing experience, we knew we had to make some serious upgrades to our boat if we wanted to keep this journey going. So we decided to go all in with our 40-year-old boat and get a new engine. We soon realized that we were in for more projects than we originally planned on. There's gonna be some major changes coming up, so hit subscribe and join us for the journey. What's up guys, welcome back to Sailing GBU. Welcome back, welcome back. Today is an exciting day. You guys been waiting for it, we've been waiting for it. We are finally gonna put our engine in. We were going over hurdles, trying to get it hauled out because there's a little bit of a stern tube issue that I wanted to deal with. So the boat still might get crashed down and sink someday anyway, <laughs> but we're getting the motor in. We couldn't get hauled out, no insurance coming for us. So we're just gonna pull to the side of the dock, put it on, take it in, lower it down and start this process. It's gonna be a lengthy process, I'm sure. It's gonna be as simple as it can be because we're putting in our beta marine and all the reading that I've done and people that I've spoken with, they love it. Installation should go pretty easy, but it's not the engine I'm worried about, it's our boat. It's, this thing's 100,000 years old. So is it gonna fit? What am I gonna to have to change? Hopefully it just goes right in there and it's a plug and play, but you know, we're gonna to see. Today we're getting into it. Uh, but first things first, I have to, get in there and do some prep work because the guys are gonna be coming in about an hour. So I'm gonna be hustling because I have to get my coupling off and I have to get the shaft prepared for sliding on the gripless coupling, what's it called, stuffing box. It's like a stuffing box type thing that I have to get on there. So there's some prep work that has to go into that. So I have to clean out my engine room and it's time to get busy. Let's go. I'm not gonna say I'm nervous, but I'm not not nervous. <laughs> The first thing I gotta do here is get my coupling off. And once I have that off, it's going to be time to clean the shaft so that it's not rusty and it doesn't like chafe my new packing seal. Seal, pack seal, something like that. So I gotta get that off, get that cleaned up and I'm not looking forward to it because these bolts look pretty rusty. All right guys, so I have exhausted all my options. I can't get it to budge. I did get the bolts to come loose, uh, but I'm gonna go hit up Cheech and see if my dog got some like bolt buster or something that I can soak it in and maybe hopefully get it off there. 
He might just come in here with a big hammer. He might got the tool for it. I don't really know, but the old hammer and holding the wrench in the other end ain't working for me. All right, so my dog got me a bigger hammer. That might work. All right, so my dog hooked me up with some CRC Marine 656. It's a multi-purpose lubricant. It says that it frees rusted parts, and they gave me the hammer of Thor, the Mjolnir, or whatever it's called. So I'm gonna go in there, and I'm gonna start busting it wide open. Oh, I'm nervous. thing for about an hour now I cannot get it to even budge I haven't got a even a hair out of it so I'm gonna touch it with my grinder wheel here and see if I can cut it off if it's too much sparks I don't really want too much sparks in that little area I'll catch something on fire but maybe it's not too bad and I can just rip it right off It'd be crazy if it was like aluminum or something maybe Quite the job to get that off. All right, it looks like the guys are here to help. Matt's gone outside. We're about to pull some moves, I think. I'm not quite sure. So we got our bimini off. We're still trying to work on that coupling, it's being crazy, but we're going to get a torch. We think if we can heat it up, we can get her out of there. All right, so Cheech came in with a torch. He heated it up and he was able to get that thing right off there. You know, I probably could have done it, but I just wasn't able to at the time. I had a crank. All right, so this is my Volvo Pinto. Volvo Pinto. <laughs> That's uh, X-rated there. Volvo Penta uh, <laughs> shaft seal here. And this is the part that goes on to keeps the water out of the boat. So this thing is uh, muy importante. So that was crazy. We took the piece off and the clamp wasn't quite fitting right. It could have been because my uh, stern tube was a little bit worn out, so I wasn't super happy about that, but we did get it clamped on. I tell you what though, water, when you take that off, it shoots in pretty fast. So if you ever get a, you know, three quarter or one inch hole in your boat, that water is going to be coming in pretty darn quick. So be prepared for that. Get your bungs ready and just make it a bung hole and that's going to help you out. But yeah, we got it on there. No water is coming in the boat now. The bilge pumps were working pretty hard there for a little minute. And uh, now I have to go back in the water and put the shaft back on. The prop. Excuse me. The prop back on to the shaft so that we can see where the engine needs to line up. They said to do it two or an inch and a half back from the strut. So we're going to get in there and do that now.
All right, guys, please excuse the wind. We're going down here doing the motor. I think there's easier ways to do it, but I ain't telling these guys how to how to do their job. So I'm getting down here. It's like 8 a.m. They're busy working, and uh, we're going to get busy. Let's go. All right, guys, so Salchicha is the man. He got it in here. I was nervous, definitely not the way I would have done it. I was scared. I was like a little baby boy about to start crying, but he got it in, you know, and that's why you hire the pros. These boys know what they're doing. They, they might have changed my ways on that. You know what I mean? I always think I could do it best, but I'm not sure. I think they did a little better than I could. All right, guys, so my dog's left. I gotta go get some screws. I gotta go get eight of these that are two and a half inches long. So I'm gonna be hopping on the scooter. Hopefully this bad weather gets out of here. But anyway, in the confusion this morning, the guys showed up a little bit earlier. We were scheduled for 10 and they showed up at eight. So I didn't have time to come down here and prep and I forgot to put my fuel tank back in there. Um, luckily, it's a small enough fuel tank. We don't carry much diesel here. We're kind of like one of the most hardcore in our dog sailing channels. So we only carry 10 <laughs> yeah, pounds whatever. of diesel. But uh, it's a little tank that I'll be able to easily get back there, but it's full of diesel right now. So I need to put that diesel back in these tanks and then that'll be light enough for me to be able to finagle back in there. But the engine is in. It seems to be lining up really well. So far, I couldn't be happier. I'm pretty hyped on the deal. My dog, I know I've said it a few times and I'm being redundant at this point, but the way he put the engine on a rope, it was like someone was just dangling my child. And I said, oh Lord, but they know what they're doing. So that's why, you know, I like to attack to jobs myself, but these guys know a lot more about this sort of thing, the way they torched off parts of the old stuff, the way they were able to get this in, it just goes a lot quicker and I trust them. Plus, you know, they're in church. So there's that safety net as well. So I'm gonna get this diesel moved so that I can get my tank in there. Don't give me a diesel bath. <sighs> I gotta take out my wood piece that I use to stabilize my access panel. So I gotta take that out, and I think once that's out, I'll be able to just slide it in. Hopefully. There.
did it. Got it. I know I could get it in here. I got it in here back in the DZ. I took it to the other side though. It was a, a little bit harder, but it's a small tank. It's only a 14 gallon tank, which is going to give us a, with the two jerry cans, 24 gallons, which burns about a gallon an hour. So it gives us about a 24 hour motoring range, which will be a hundred miles roughly, which is really all you need. You know, we don't just have the mass for the style points. I'm out here, my favorite, the skipper shop, my dogs held me down. Got my bolts here and my washers. So I'm just gonna be jumping on my sweet scooter and getting back to the boat so we can tear it up and get this engine done. But we almost out of water, so I gotta get some water too. I think y'all are gonna like this. y'all so i had to get away from that crazy loud machine so i could talk to y'all i know i told y'all that i was just going to get water and i walked out with some cervezas but the cervezas por me por mi hermanos por mi trabajadores for my homies that are helping me with the engine out today you know i don't know where it is where you're at today but today is friday so i'm gonna give the boys some beer so at least they can pop off but i ain't giving it to them till they're done with me so let's get the let's get the the hammer stepping. guys next day the engine is in the boat and it feels surreal it feels i can't feel my legs i can't i'm like a baby deer but no seriously so when we left off yesterday i was making the run for the midnight sun it was on a sunday and oh no it wasn't on a sunday saturday friday friday it was a friday i don't know what day it is it's all the same day to me when you're a youtuber every day is friday but uh so I had to run real quick to get the bolts, I think they're called lag bolts maybe, to bolt them into the floor because while I had all those guys here, I wanted to be able to make some small adjustments to get it roughly lined up with the shaft. And as you could tell, maybe, or maybe you couldn't tell, I don't know, we haven't made this video yet, but it was chaos. I was like, freaking out i was nervous about how we're gonna get it on here they were you know. putting it on without us too and we had to run with yeah. the gopro that's why our shots of getting it on the boat were a little crazy yeah they get busy they work so when they're ready to go they they, they start ripping for you they don't do take twos and all that <laughs> cool stuff that we do so that was stressful i was stressed out they weren't stressed out those guys are super pros they're awesome he was like yeah bro relax they do stuff like this all the time so they're like yeah Tie to the halyard and you, you rip it over. Me being Gary Gringo, of course, I'm like, what if the halyard breaks? I could demast. My sprinters are 20 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just Those like, yeah. All valid things. They were just like, yeah, bro, it's fine. They swung it out, George of the Jungle style, and you know, the engine went oh, right on the boat. They had it from the dock to in the boat, 15 seconds maybe. So they were killing it. So thankful I had those guys here. And then, like I said, when I had them in here, it was a lot easier to have four different sets of hands on the engine to make those micro adjustments to get it close to where the shaft was. So I'm super excited about that. I was really glad that I had them, but now they're gone and it's GBU time. I hate other people working on my boat. I hate to be that dude that's constantly like caught along. I've had some great mentors in my life and I think at 37 years old, the, the elders have taught me enough to try to do it on my own. So Beta Marines are sold as anyone can buy them and put them in kind of on their own and do it by themselves they have easy a, yeah, installation great manual that comes with it the instructions you know i always said back when i was a landscaper i know a lot of y'all think i'm rich man papper over here but <laughs> back when i was landscaping putting in sprinklers you know i learned that if it comes with instructions you can do it 
and Beta Marine sent us some great instructions, and I'm sure they have some customer service as well to help us out. So, you know, old Uncle Maddie's going in. I'm on my 50 cent. We got it. If we're, I can't we're do smart it, enough. Yeah. You're smart enough. If you I can't this. do it, it can't be done. So it's uh, we're going to work on it. But that being said, already putting it in, there are a few little things that I have to get perfectly. I had that... We've had a few problems, but... Yeah, I had that prior problem with my stern tube. I, I'm having struggling to get insurance and get hauled out, so I'm just going to do it without completely repairing that stern tube, which is what I'd like to do. So to line up the shaft perfectly, I'm dealing with eighths, eighths of an inch. Got some problems, so let's go in. We'll, we're going to share the whole engine install with you. Let's share the problems with you too. So as you know, we had some damage with the old engine. It was misaligned and it was kind of tore up our stern tube a little bit and I can't get hauled out to get that fixed. So it's a little thin on one side. I'm not happy about it, but it is what it is. I think if I can get my shaft directly centered there, it's not going to interact with that stern tube at all. And there's still enough meat on it that it's going to keep the water out and you can attach a shaft seal onto it. Problem is I got the wrong size measurement for my outside diameter of my stern tube. So my shaft seal, my brand new, Volvo Pinto shaft seal didn't fit perfectly. I put it on and it it's put it very in. very close. It's like a couple of millimeters off. Yeah, it had the nice shaft seal thing on there, like the clamp. And I had to throw that away and we had to put some hose clamps on here just to get it clamped down to keep the water out. So the problem with the hose clamps is I don't want them putting too much pressure on that already weakened stern tube part. So I want to get the perfect part. And I'm just going to have to work on that later and get the as much butyl tape in here so I can get the perfect measurement for that. I think I know which part it is. They only have two options that are even near here. So it has to be that just two millimeter smaller one. And I think it's going to work out a lot better. As you can see, my studs for the feet, stud bolts, I guess maybe is what they're called. The nuts were all the way at the top. They're all the way to the max that you can mount them on those bolts they're fully extended fully extended which is something i thought i would have to happen i i thought that i would have to build onto these stringers a little bit when i had to mount it but that's why i was glad i had all the guys in here because we could easily lift it and push it up it would have taken me all day long by myself and only took us like an hour to to get it close you can see where the coupling that comes out of the transmission or the marine gear Sorry, I know a lot of people are going to cuss me out for not using the right marine terminology. So either way, the transmission has like a coupling and then the shaft has a coupling. You can see that they're pretty close together now so I can get a rough measurement for how much I need to build up the stringer. I think it's going to be one inch on the front, maybe an inch and a quarter to the rear. So I'm going to have to level that off. Um, build that up with some hardwood and some fiberglass and then I think I'm going to widen it a little bit as well just to give it a little more strength and an, and an ability to uh, side to side. I just want to give it something really solid to mount to so that when it if there ever is any sort of vibration or something like that it's not going to completely fly or fall off or I'm having something kind of on the edge of something that's going to wear out quickly. So definitely don't want it that high on the bolts because the manual says it's bad. It leads to premature uh, degradation of the rubber feet things so um you know and for vibration it's better to have it lower on the studs and i i agree with it just from looking at it it doesn't look right you don't want to have your engine up on you know quarter inch or three quarter inch stilts it's not something <laughs> you want to do so we're going to be getting that built up and we're going to be waiting on parts we have to order a, a lot of different things ray cores uh, C strainers, stuff like that that has to come in that we're still kind of shopping around for. So we got a little bit of time before the engine's actually in and running, but I'm super happy with the step that we got it in and we kind of know where to go. We have some gangster attempts, some gangster engineering thoughts to how we're going to align that shaft since we can't get hauled out. And stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's definitely not. This ain't your grandpappy's installation. I watched every video on the internet of people putting in these little red... 30 horsepowers and uh there was some good ones you, you got a few ideas out there a couple y'all did it but you know true gbu fashion we got to do it the hardest way that could possibly ever be done with water shooting in our faces the whole time and uh it ain't gonna be easy but we're gonna get it done all right guys so the engine's in we got a lot of work ahead of us. We have, I've already read the manual. You're, you've read the manual. We've read it separately and we have came up with ideas. So we have a really good, exciting 
videos to come on this engine. The installation is going to be difficult in for us because we've never done it before, so it's a lot of learning, but I think we've got this pretty much situated and we're gonna see how it goes. And so now through our videos, hopefully we can help you guys understand how to do an engine installation and hopefully it brings down some people that are out there thinking about getting a new engine that are maybe worried about it because after reading the manual, I feel like it is definitely possible. When you think about getting a new engine, it's really scary. You're like, I'm never gonna know how to do this. I don't know how to do any of this stuff and what is this gonna do? And then it's really actually not as scary as you think. Yeah, and it's fun to learn. But <laughs> the, and they do all the hard work for you. They wired in a, you know, a pump for the oil. They have all the electrical harnesses wired together. So it is a plug and play in a lot of respects. From all the old work I had to do on the old engine that I had to do everything, they, uh, they they thought this engine out well it was a you know well thought out and they did a lot for people that didn't go to electrical school for you know marine engineering so i'm excited about it i was so excited that i trimmed my hair cut up and i gave myself a sling blader what? kirsten always gets mad i went to shave my beard and i forgot that i didn't have the trimmer on and i went up so i got a little you know a little went a little spicy with the bim, the beard trim here but i'm hyped it's gonna go light at the end of the tunnel here and you know it can't go wrong and if the last thing i gotta do if i gotta fly in a mechanic from beta marine <laughs> we don't I'm i sure got one it one of them will want to come I in got and hang this. out with i got this guys days. i'm pretty confident in my skills so we got this right guys make sure you hit subscribe so you can see the rest of our engine videos and Give us some advice down below if you've installed one of these. Say, hey, make sure you don't do this because this could go bad. And anything else you have to say? Oh, they're going to tell us it's going to go bad. That's <laughs> Oh, okay. That's don't tell us do. it's going to go bad. Just tell us don't do this else it could go bad. Anyways, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.